Hello, I am Dr. Aruna Samil and we are going to discuss in this video few topics from genetics. These are sex determination, autosomes and sex linked inheritance and genetic disorders. Let us first talk about autosomal inheritance and sex linked inheritance. These are 23 pairs of chromosomes found in human somatic cell. Functionally, they can be divided as autosomes and sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes are responsible for determination of sex, whereas autosomes, they contain genes which control the characters other than the sex of the individual. These characters are called autosomal linked traits. Traits are the inheritable characters and the genes controlling these characters when are present on the autosomes they are called autosomal link traits. The inheritance, the transmission of these traits from generation to generation is called autosomal inheritance. Now the genes responsible for the appearance of these traits may be dominant or recessive. We are going to take the example of both. We will discuss widow's peak. This feature is controlled by a dominant gene. Besides that, Huntington's disease is also controlled by dominant gene. We will also be considering an example of phenylketonuria, PKU, which is controlled by recessive gene on the autosome. Besides this PKU disease, the cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia, these are also controlled by recessive genes. Widow's P. As said earlier, the genes controlling this feature are present on the autosomes and the gene is dominant or dominant gene is responsible for the appearance of this feature in the human body. A prominent V-shaped hairline on the forehead is described as widow's peak. Here you can see the V-shaped hairline and it is determined by autosomal dominant gene denoted by capital W. Whereas the straight hairline is determined by recessive gene small w. This is the straight hairline. Now what are the possible genotypes? One of them is homozygous dominant, both capital W and capital W. The capital W is responsible for widow's P. Here both are dominant gene, so naturally the phenotype is going to be widow's P. The second possible genotype, heterozygous dominant, where one gene is dominant, other gene is recessive, but dominant gene only will show its expression and it will again show the phenotype widow's P. Whereas the third possible genotype is homozygous recessive. Both the genes are recessive. So the recessive gene will find its expression and the phenotype will be straight hairline. Here both males and females have equal chance of inheritance of this feature. The phenylketonuria commonly called PKU. It is also it also shows autosomal inheritance, but it is controlled by recessive gene. The widow's peak we discussed earlier is controlled by dominant gene. PKU is controlled by recessive gene. It is determined by autosomal recessive gene. Let us call it by small p. The normal condition is due to autosomal dominant gene, capital P. What are the possible genotypes? Once again, homozygous dominant. So, capital P, capital P. And normal condition is because of dominant gene. Therefore, here the phenotype will be the person will have no disease of phenylketonuria. Another possibility is heterozygous dominant. Here, one gene is capital P dominant, other gene is small p recessive. Naturally, the gene responsible for disease will get suppressed and person once again will not suffer from the disease phenylketonuria.
whereas in the third possibility where homozygous recessive both the genes are recessive so the genes will find the expression and person will suffer from phenylketonuria both males and females have equal chance of inheritance and these traits tend to skip generation it is because here in this case where we are finding heterozygous dominant condition when this is present in a person that person will not be suffering from the disease but it will be the carrier of the disease so in that generation the disease will not be seen in the next generation again the disease will appear and that is why it is said that these traits tend to skip the generations what is phenylketonuria let us understand the disease phenylalanine is a kind of amino acid which is received in the body through diet or through metabolism it gets created in the body this phenylalanine in presence of phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme gets converted into tyrosine and tyrosine is then further metabolized but when this is the genotype of a person where both recessive genes are present homozygous recessive the person cannot produce the phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme this enzyme is not produced and when this enzyme is not produced then phenylalanine will not get converted into tyrosine the tyrosine will not get produced so phenylalanine will go on getting accumulated in the blood and cerebrospinal fluid as a result the person will suffer from the disease pku and the symptoms observed will be it will affect the development of brain and it will cause mental retardation excess phenylalanine ultimately will be excreted through urine and therefore this disease is called phenylketonuria once again recall the 23 sets of chromosomes in human being of which the 22 pairs are autosomes and two are the sex chromosomes now we are going to consider those genes which are present on the sex chromosomes but they are not responsible for the sex of the person but they are controlling the characters other than the sex and these are the x chromosome and y chromosome which are responsible for sex linked inheritance these chromosomes have the non homologous regions and homologous regions we are talking about the genes present on the non homologous regions those present on the non homologous region of the x chromosome they are called x linked genes and those present on the non homologous part of the y chromosome they are called y linked genes now the recessive genes are always responsible for the sex linked traits here we can see two x chromosomes which are found in female in female the two recessive genes are required for the expression of sex linked traits but usually it happens that one of the chromosomes it has as shown here one recessive gene and the other x chromosome has dominant gene for normal condition and in this case the female will not suffer from the disease she will have all normal conditions but she will have the gene for the disease this is called carrier condition of the female whereas in case of male if x chromosome has the recessive gene for the disease there not being another x chromosome there is no possibility of dominant gene being present to suppress the effect of this recessive gene and therefore the male always suffers from the disease if it receives the gene for the disease there cannot be a condition as carrier male and therefore it has been found that the male 
quite often suffer from the disease or the disease quite frequently is observed in male as compared to females so sex linked traits we have already said are those which are controlled by the genes present on non homologous part of the sex chromosomes and their inheritance is called sex linked inheritance the sex linked inheritance is of two types x linked genes or x linked inheritance and the y linked or phalangre gene inheritance we will be taking the example of only x linked gene one is color blindness and the other is hemophilia or bleeders disease the other examples of x linked inheritance is night blindness myopia and muscular dystrophy let us first discuss color blindness as we said earlier it is sex linked disease it shows x linked inheritance and it is a recessive disorder that means the gene responsible for color blindness is a recessive gene person is unable to distinguish between the red and green color as both the colors appear gray to this person suffering from color blindness let us take this gene x small c it is a recessive gene and when this gene is present the color sensitive cells cones in the retina of the eye cannot be formed whereas the x capital c is a dominant gene and when this gene is present it is allowing the color sensitive cells the cones to produce in the retina of the eye now these are the possible genotypes we can see here x capital c y so basically it's a male and because the gene present is capital c dominant gene the condition will be normal and the person will be will not be having color blindness it, it, he will have normal vision whereas in case of female xc xc capital uh, genes are present so here also the capital c when it is shown it is dominant condition and person will not suffer from color blindness whereas in this genotype we are finding that it is x small c the recessive gene present and other chromosome being y chromosome this expression or this gene will always find its expression and the person will suffer from color blindness whereas in case of this female individual both the genes being recessive once again the female will suffer from the disease then in case of male individual there is no possibility of it being carrier whereas in case of female if one gene is for the disease the recessive gene but the other gene is for normal condition and normal gene is the gene for normal condition is dominant and therefore the female though she has the gene for the disease she will not suffer from the disease she is called carrier for that disease let us take one example when marriage between color blind male and normal female is observed then this is the uh, male and female and the genotype x small c that is the color blind male and the other gene is y because it is male and in case of female it is normal female so both the genes are dominant the gametes they are formed after meiosis so these genes separate into the gametes so sperms and eggs are the gametes produced this way two types of sperms will be produced some will be having the gene for the disease and other sperms will be having y chromosome whereas eggs will be again uh, having all of them the gene for normal condition fertilization will give rise to f1 generation let us see the combination if this sperm fuses with the egg this is going to be the genotype of the zygote if this sperm fuses with this egg 
than the genotype. This way, the different possible genotypes of the progeny and what will be the phenotype. This will be the female individual, but she will be the carrier. This also will be the same genotype, so carrier daughter. And here the son who will be normal because dominant gene and here also the same genotype. So 50% children, the daughters, they will be carrier daughters and all sons will be normal son. Now we will continue with this inheritance. Suppose this carrier daughter marries with a normal person then marriage between carrier daughter and normal male what are the genotypes the normal male genotype capital c dominant and here the carrier female meiosis gives rise to the gametes the two types of gametes some having dominant gene for normal condition some remaining having Y chromosome. Whereas in case of X, there will be two types of X produced. Some will be having gene for normal condition and remaining will be having gene for the color blindness. Fertilization will give rise to F1 generation. Let us see the possible combinations of the sperm and egg uniting. And what are the phenotypes? These will be the daughters produced. These are going to be the son of these daughters. This will be normal and this will be the carrier. So no daughter is going to suffer from the disease. But in case of male, the sons produced, 50% son will be normal and 50% will be color blind. So here we observe that the we started with the marriage between colorblind male. So we started with the colorblind male. The female was not having the disease. Then through their colorblind, their carrier daughter, the disease got transmitted and appeared again into the son. So the disease got transmitted from colorblind grandfather through his carrier daughter to the grandson. So alternate generation the disease is appearing and it is also changing the sex. First generation it was in the male then it came into the daughter though she remained carrier daughter and then it appeared again in the male and this inheritance pattern is called crisscross inheritance. Now exactly same pattern we will be able to observe in the other disease what we are going to discuss and that is hemophilia or bleeder's disease. Now in this disease the person who suffers from this disease is deficient in the clotting factor and as a result the blood fails to clot or it coagulates very slowly and as a result even minor injuries cause continuous bleeding and death. Hence this disease is called bleeder's disease. So let us consider the X small h as a recessive gene responsible for the uh, failure to, to undergo the clotting process and X capital H the dominant gene which indicates the normal condition. What are the possible genotypes? Once again these are the male genotypes. Male can never be a carrier and females there, there can be a normal female. There can be a colorblind female. See both the genes when are having, both the genes are recessive. Then the female is colorblind. But there can be a carrier female also. When one gene is for normal condition, other gene is for the disease. Here it is hemophilia. Then the female is a carrier of the disease. And the inheritance pattern is also similar to that of colorblind. This is the genotype of male individual and female which is normal. The male is suffering from the disease hemophilia. The meiosis gives rise to the gametes, sperms and eggs. 
two types of sperms are produced only one type of egg produced and fertilization gives rise to these different combinations and what are the phenotypes observed the daughters are carrier daughters whereas sons are normal sons so the disease from it, it is there in the male but in the first generation no one is suffering but daughters are carrier now through this carrier daughter the disease will be transmitted to the son if this carrier daughter marries a normal person so marriage between the carrier daughter and a normal male these are the genotypes gametes after meiosis sperm and eggs two types of sperms are produced two types of eggs are produced fertilization gives rise to the f1 generation and these are the possible combinations in the progeny and here we observe that the daughters are either normal daughter or carrier daughter but not suffering from the disease whereas in case of son the there can be a normal son or the son can be hemophilic son so again the disease is transmitted from hemophilic grandfather through his daughter to hemophilic son so we had taken the combination as marriage between hemophilic male with this we had started and then we continued with the carrier daughter and we realized that the disease is changing its sex from male to female and then it is appearing in alternate generation so this is called criss cross inheritance we are now going to discuss the next topic and that is sex determination sex determination there are different mechanisms and the mechanism by which sex is established in an organism is termed as sex determination these mechanisms can be genetic mechanisms or it can be the environmental determination of sex but we are going to focus upon the genetic mechanism of sex determination there can be bisexual organism if both male and female reproductive systems are present in the same individual body for example earthworm whereas the organism can be unisexual if it has only male reproductive system or only female reproductive system as is found in human being the bisexual organism other scientific terms are monoecious or hermaphrodite and for unisexual organism it is also described as dioecious let us consider sex determination in human beings what is the mechanism observed here it is xx xy mechanism the first genotype is of female and then it is of male so chromosomes in the somatic nucleus are always 46 which are arranged in 23 pairs the 22 pairs are autosomes and two are sex chromosomes so one pair is of sex chromosome the two sex chromosomes present are x and y chromosome the human female is homomorphic because it has both sex chromosome as x chromosome besides 22 pairs of autosomes whereas human male is called heteromorphic because the sex chromosomes present in him are x and y so when gametes are formed by meiosis division the human female produces undergoes oogenesis produces eggs the human male undergoes spermatogenesis in the testes and produce sperm and these eggs they are all of one type same type hence homogametic they all contain x as sex chromosome whereas in case of male 50% sperms contain x chromosome as sex chromosome and remaining contain y chromosome as sex chromosome therefore the sperms or the male is called heterogametic now let us see how the sex is determined the male individual and female individual as we said earlier 44 autosomes and x and y as the sex chromosomes so heteromorphic and here female homomorphic meiosis gamete formation 
sperms and eggs the gametes are of two types heterogametic and here gamete all of one type homogametic fertilization giving rise to f1 generation let us see if this sperm we have arranged them in pinnate square if this sperm unites with this egg then the resultant progeny will be a girl child and this sperm uniting with this egg the progeny will be son similar way this sperm uniting with this egg the child will be the girl child and the sperm containing y chromosome unites with the egg containing x chromosome then the child sex will be the boy child thus the eggs are of same type but the sperms are of two different types possibility of there being a girl child born or boy child born is 50% but the sex of the child is determined by the sperms because eggs are of same type the sperms are of different types so these are the conclusion one is to one sex ratio and sex of the child depends upon the father it depends upon the type of sperms let us see sex determination in birds it is exactly the opposite mechanism observed and we are calling it zw zz type zw that is heterogametic female and homogametic male so parents male and female the genotype here it is homomorphic heteromorphic the gametes are formed gametes are homogametic male and heterogametic female fertilization once again pinnet square method we are using the sperms and eggs are arranged here when this sperm sperms are all same type unites with the egg having z chromosome the offspring will be the male offspring and this sperm uniting once again male offspring whereas this sperm uniting with the egg having w chromosome then heteromorphic so female offspring and the sperm uniting with this egg female offspring so once again 50 50% chances of it being male or female offspring but in this case female is responsible for determining the sex of the offspring the baby born the third mechanism is observed in honey bee and this mechanism is called haplodiploid here not the sex chromosome but how many sets of chromosome are present in the cell that determines the sex of the honey bee so parents male and female genotype the male has only one set of chromosome whereas female means it has two sets of chromosomes gametes are formed the male undergoes mitosis to produce sperm and as a result and female undergoes meiosis to produce egg this is the difference otherwise we say that gametes are produced by meiosis but in this case the male gametes are produced by mitosis and female gametes are produced by meiosis so as a result the sperms are haploid uh, the only one set of chromosome and eggs also are haploid single set of chromosome when fertilization takes place and f1 generation is formed suppose the sperm unites with the egg resultant two sets of chromosomes are observed in the zygote and this zygote will develop into as we have seen two sets means female so this zygote is going to develop into female but further depending upon the diet if this zygote is given the royal jelly special type of food which is secreted by worker bees which has special uh, content of amino acids and fatty acids then it is royal jelly if this royal jelly is the food 
of this developing zygote then it develops into queen bee whereas this diploid zygote if it consumes the normal diet then it develops into worker bee so both are female individuals but female individuals may be queen bee or it can be worker bee whereas when the egg does not undergo fertilization and it undergoes further development this is called parthenocarpy without fertilization the progeny develops and then it develops into male or drone bee this is the way sex is determined in honeybee now let us discuss the fourth topic and that is genetic disorders genetic disorders are of two types mendelian disorders and chromosomal disorders what is the difference between them the mendelian disorder is caused due to alteration or mutation in the gene so it is point mutation you can say whereas chromosomal disorder is caused due to absence or uh, excess presence of the entire chromosome and not only the gene present but entire chromosome is additionally present or is missing then it is chromosomal disorder and here in mendelian disorder we are focusing on only at a point at a locus where the gene is located and some mutation occurs at that single point that is mendelian disorder the disease coming under mendelian disorders are thalassemia sickle cell anemia color blindness hemophilia and phenyl ketonuria whereas chromosomal disorder down syndrome turner syndrome klinefelter syndrome first let us discuss thalassemia it is autosomal recessive disease this is hemoglobin molecule as we all know it is present in human rbcs and is mainly responsible for transportation of oxygen this has two beta chains and two alpha chains these beta chains and alpha chains structure is controlled by genes these genes the beta chain controlling genes are present on chromosome number 11 and there is only one gene which is described here as hbb whereas alpha chain structure is controlled by the gene present on chromosome number 16 they are pair of genes and they are described as hba1 and hba2 now deletion or mutation occurs only at these points suppose it occurs at the genes controlling beta chain then the disease is called beta thalassemia and if it occurs in these genes present on chromosome number 16 deletion or mutation then the disease is called alpha thalassemia what are the symptoms anemia pale yellow skin change in size and shape of rbcs and slow growth and development dark urine what is the treatment for this the patients need massive blood transfusion it is mendelian disorder because the deletion or mutation is occurring at single point at the gene region and not the entire chromosome therefore this is mendelian disorder this is down's syndrome what is the difference between a syndrome and a disease syndrome is actually the cluster of the symptoms when are seen it is called syndrome so autosomal chromosomal syndrome it is it is not mendelian disease it is chromosomal disease what is the reason 21st trisomy that is an extra copy of chromosome is observed at number 21 and as a result instead of 46 chromosome there are 47 chromosomes found see here at chromosome number 21 everywhere you find pair of homologous chromosomes but here we find not two but three chromosomes being present and this is an abnormality this is called 21st trisomy due to this happens due to non separation or failure of separation of autosomes during gamete formation during meiosis type of division the symptoms mild or moderate mental retardation skeletal development is very poor and distinct 
facial features are seen as well as the certain features on hands are observed in this disease. Turner syndrome. Once again, it is sex chromosomal disorder. It is chromosomal disorder, but it is the sex chromosomal disorder and mostly in females. It is observed only in females. The reason is X monosomy. That is in females, we expect two X chromosome, but when instead of two, only one X chromosome is present, the other X chromosome is missing. So total number of chromosomes become 45, 44 autosomes. And only one X chromosome, one more X chromosome is expected to be there, but it is missing. So this is called Turner's syndrome. See here in this karyotype, you can see all 22 pairs of chromosome and here the sex chromosome only one. The other one is missing. Symptoms, short stature, wet neck, lower posterior hairline, broad shield shaped chest, Ovaries and breast are poorly developed and intelligence is low. Let us go to the next uh, syndrome. It is Klinefelter's syndrome. It is also X chromo sex chromosomal disorder and it affects only males. The Turner syndrome is found in females. Klinefelter syndrome is found in males and they are called feminized males. What is the reason? One X chromosome is extra here. As a result, instead of 46, 47 chromosomes. In Turner syndrome, one X chromosome is missing. In Klinefelter syndrome, one X chromosome is extra. So here we find 44 autosomes in 22 pairs and the sex chromosomes are not two, they are three. Here in this karyotype, we can see here the three sex chromosomes. Same reason, symptoms. Male individual has overall masculine development. However, gynecomastia, that is breast development, is observed. The voice pitch is harsh. They are tall with long arms and individuals are sterile as testes do not show spermatogenesis. Testes are underdeveloped. Here we have come to the end of our discussion on sex determination, autosomes, sex-linked inheritance and genetic disorders. Thank you.